Streetwear is huge now. What started as an underground, insular subculture is now the uniform for young people all over the world. The culture has exploded over social media and the hype seems to be getting crazier every week. In recent years, South Korea has built a reputation as one of Asia's leading fashion destinations. It's a place that's home to talented young designers, next level street style, and a clothing obsessed consumer culture. The Korean scene is booming, but beneath the surface, there's an insane market for counterfeit streetwear, and it's unlike anything you'll see in the West. I went to Seoul Fashion Week to see it all for myself. 60 years ago, Korea was torn apart in a bloody civil war. While North Korea has since descended into an oppressive dystopia, the South has rapidly transformed into a capitalist powerhouse. Now, South Korea is the world's 14th largest economy, and Seoul itself is the fifth wealthiest city on Earth. In a phenomenon called the Hallyu, or Wave, South Korean pop culture has been exported all over the globe. Fashion magazines are obsessed with Korean beauty products, K-dramas are popular way beyond Asia, and the country's tech companies are world famous, even if their phones sometimes explode. Seoul is clean, orderly and modern. The city feels brand new, and districts like Gangnam and Apgujong are filled with stylish 20-somethings. Fashion is clearly a big part of the culture here. There's a lot of hierarchy and conformity in Korea, so looking good is very important. Plastic surgery is huge. You can get Botox done on your lunch break, and double eyelid operations are a common graduation present. Society here is still very traditional, but Korean youth culture is thriving. Young Koreans have grown up in a rich, high-tech country, and unlike their parents, they don't have any memories of war, shortages or famine. You can clearly see the generation gap on the streets. Young Koreans are tall, fashionable and obsessed with their phones. Korean society is still largely hierarchical. That is, you sort of follow the directions of your supervisors at work. Um, there's like a clear structure for who's in charge and who's under that person, who's under that next person. A lot of how style is influenced in modern times, how young people are influenced, is really K-pop and K-drama and a lot of the sort of music and art and film that they see. You know, this is a consumer culture now. They've been their entire lives have been during a time of affluence in South Korea, where South Korea was all about sort of um, becoming richer and um, showing signs of that wealth. And so it makes sense then it would flow that uh, the culture, the youth culture, is a lot more consumer driven and arguably a lot more superficial. Young Jung Koo is a street style photographer who shoots for magazines like Vogue, W, and GQ. Koo shoots at all the major fashion weeks. So I met up with him in Apgujong to find out how Korean style compares to the rest of the world. Streetwear is massive in Korea, even though it's really hard to get hold of hyped brands. You can't even buy Supreme here, so many Koreans have to pay excruciating prices from resellers who are bringing it over from Japan, and that's already twice as expensive as America. Favorite brand or, 살수 있는 브랜드와 좋아하는 브랜드가 확실히 이렇게 나눠져 있는데 
우리나라에서도 그래서 그런 슈프림을 겨냥한 브랜드들이 많이 나와 있어요 어떻게 보면 이제 한국 사람들의 그런 지금 유행하는 옷에 적합하게 만든 옷이라고 보면 될 거예요 인스테드 오브 슈프림 아까 제가 말했던 것처럼 그런 트렌드들에 가장 영향을 많이 미치기 때문에 그런 카피 제품들이 많이 나와요 그래서 뭐 모스트 오브 그런 스트릿 브랜드들이 한국에 스토어를 오픈하려고 왔, 왔음에도 불구하고 이런 한국의 패션 씬을 보고 스토어를 오픈하지 않겠다고 이제 결정을 한 그런 상황까지도 있었다는 얘기를 들었는데 The limited supply and high demand for streetwear in Korea has created a gap in the market and there's people here that are ready to fill it either through look-alike brands or with straight-up fakes. We are not even 100 meters across the road from the official Seoul Fashion Week venue over there, and we are surrounded by fake streetwear. Supreme sweatpants, Champion, Stussy. There's some Tom Brown over there. The quality is really quite poor. So it actually says on the tag, Supreme, the Super Supreme. Hood by Air. Sorry, Shane. So right here, we've got every Supreme sweatshirt you could possibly imagine. Doesn't look great. Never seen that one before. The logo nice and big. So everyone can see it. This is made in Korea. All made. All made in Korea. How much? This twenty-eight thousand. Twenty-eight thousand. So that is about twenty dollars, twenty-five dollars for a Supreme box logo hoodie. It's not bad. It's weird. Ah, 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 혹시 뭐 벨트 만들 수 있어요? Okay. Says if you ask, if you order a belt, you can get one made. How much? All my ass. So we found a stash of belt material. There's off white. Sorry, Virgil. There's the gros grain that they used in Champion X Vetemore. Sorry, Demner. Down here. There's some Gucci. Sorry, Alessandro. Korea is a very homogenous country, and its culture demands submission to elders and authority. That means pop culture figures hold massive influence over the rest of the country. So when someone like G-Dragon or CL starts a trend, everyone follows. Seoul Fashion Week might be young, but its attendees are just as capable of putting together outrageous outfits as their peers in New York and in Paris. Face masks are worn all over Asia to protect from pollution and sandstorms, but they were the city's must-have accessory for slightly different reasons. Ah, mask, yeah. Just, just fashion. Yeah, just fashion. Ah, this one, where, where, where to go, sir? Mask, yeah. 일단은 약간의 못 멋이랄까? 네, 그런 것 때문에. 전 감기요. The conformity you really see on the streets in terms of how people dress is striking. Your ability to be, uh, to move up in society um, is based on your looks and your attractiveness. And so uh, that coupled with the fact that this is a conformist place, 97% of Korea is Koreans. So it's not a place where a bunch of different styles and immigrants and um, voices are sort of mixing together. Um, the fact that there are so many Koreans in Korea uh, and the fact that it's homogenous means that once a standard is set for how you are supposed to look, uh, it's very difficult to diverge from that and um, be more individual. 트렌드에 좌지우지되는 이런 우리나라의 성향이 이런 패션에서도 미치고 뭐 음식, 뭐 라이프스타일 이런 게 모두 다 우리나라 그런 이렇게 트렌드에 좀 민감해 민감해 하는 한국 사람의 성향에 의해서 이게 많이 좌지우지되는 것 같은데 그래서 뭔가 좀 크리에이티브한 자기만의 색깔이 자기만의 스타일과 색깔이 없는 것 같아서 저는 솔직히 말하면 조금 슬픈 
경향이 없지 않아 있습니다. 한국의 스트리 스타일이. 하지만 You can see Korea's love of trends on the runway too. It's common for young designers in emerging markets to look to the West for inspiration. So for Fall Winter 17, Seoul's young designers were big into Balenciaga and Vetemore. Korea's obsession with trends has created a thriving market for counterfeits. There's shops in Dongdae Moon that are filled with fakes, and some of them are so convincing that it's almost impossible to tell them apart from the real deal. Saint Laurent. I think Justin Bieber wore this once. Except inside it says classic fashion. It doesn't feel great, but it does the job. The embroidery here is a little, could be better. I've got some Tom Brown, except it says form hom. Nearly everyone I spoke to said they shopped at Dongdae Moon, and no one seemed to really know or care that they were wearing fakes. Got some Tom Brown vibes, and on the inside it says Boy London. Whoever is making this stuff is definitely looking online for inspiration, because we found knockoffs of almost every hyped brand you can think of. To find out more about Korea's counterfeit culture, I visited Rare Market. This luxury store was founded by Dami Kwon, who's G-Dragon's sister, and has been selling high-end brands like Vetemore and Balenciaga since way before the knockoffs. Not everybody can wear the Balenciaga, so that created a market. I don't think people think that this is guilty, that copyright things and uh, the thing is not that such a familiar things to the Korean customer. So that's why people easily buy the counterfeit and uh, they don't feel guilty as a seller and buyer too. Seoul might have a bit of a problem with fakes, but there's some amazing things happening here. It feels like there's a new brand coming out of Korea every week these days, and it's only a matter of time before someone like Aderera, Kang Hyuk, or Blindness makes it big in the West. You can't help but think that Korea's love of trends is holding the country back. Instead of copying what is going on in the West, maybe it should look inwards at its own culture and history. That's why Gosha Rubchinsky has been so successful. He's shown the world something that is truly Russian. In Dongdae Moon, I ran into one of Korea's more unusual designers. Bajo Wu founded 99% Is, a brand that likes to put anarchy logos on the runway. Seeing a gang of punks strolling around streets as clean and orderly as Seoul's was a bit of a weird experience. Bajo Wu himself didn't seem like much of an anarchist either. Anarchy is uh... To me, just DIY life, yeah. No government, no politics, it's not, not to me. 99% is 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 Many of these designers studied abroad, then came back home to take advantage of the country's generous support system. Conglomerates like Samsung, Hyundai and LG are a huge part of Korean society and they're heavily involved in the fashion scene. I am not surprised that even the creative arts are um, happening or being sort of incubated in a Samsung uh, laboratory or a Samsung school. In Korea, you can be born at a Samsung hospital, you can die um, and your body can be taken to a Samsung funeral home. I mean. They call it the Republic of Samsung for good reason, because this conglomerate is just not just putting out tablets and mobile devices. It can control every aspect of your life because it's so it owns so many things, confectionaries, dry cleaning, hotels, restaurants, you know, hospitals, as I've mentioned. It makes cars. Everything your life could touch will intersect somehow with Samsung or another of the top four conglomerates. People always want what they can't have, and that is especially true in streetwear. The scene is all about exclusivity, and counterfeits are inevitable when brands deliberately make less than what they can sell. That's created a catch-22 situation in Seoul. Koreans can't get everything that they want, so of course they're going to buy fakes. 
That then means that brands don't want to sell here, so the situation only gets worse. At the end of the day, nobody can really get mad at the fakes and the knockoffs, because that's what happens when you build your business around hype. As an outsider, Korean fashion feels strange, but it just proves that streetwear is truly global now. It doesn't really matter if the clothing is real or if it's counterfeit, because so many people are engaging with it. From Seoul to London to Moscow to New York, people are using their style to speak the same language. And that's a pretty powerful thing when you think about what's going on in the world right now.